Alright guys, here it is, The Evil Within 2, sequel to one of the first games I ever played on my channel, almost three years ago to the day I posted that first video of that first game. And if you haven't seen that, you can go check it out right there. If you just want a quick recap, here's what I remember from The Evil Within 1. We played as a guy named Sebastian Castellanos. He got hooked up to some kind of brain device where he was linked with a whole bunch of other people. There was a dude named Ruvik who was in charge of everything in there, and he made our lives miserable. And by the end of the game, we ended up defeating him and destroying his brain, which made me think it was all going to be over. But then, like, the very last cutscene of the game showed uh, Ruvik, like, taking control of this other dude named Leslie and, like, exiting the machine through his body. So I guess Ruvik's still around, just in another dude's body. And there was some other stuff going on in there too, but I don't know how important it all was. <laughs> there was also a subplot with our daughter. It was like a, something they told just through like manuscripts and letters and shit. And apparently we had a daughter and then she died in a fire, but then like there was an investigation and it turned out she wasn't really dead. And it never really went anywhere, but apparently that's what this game focuses on. Now, I thought the first game was pretty okay, but... It had a lot of potential that it didn't really capitalize on. It had a lot of problems, and I'm just really hoping that they kind of learn some lessons from that and kind of fix that stuff in this game. I'm going in blind, guys. Let's check it out. And hey, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Okay, initializing profile. Got it. Oh, boy. Let me just give this a quick look-see over, guys. We've got aim. We've got an arsenal menu on L1, melee attack, and cover... Toggle communicator, that sounds new. Flashlight on or off, that is also new. Interact, take contextual actions. Sneak is on R3, sprint is on L3, that's pretty standard. Item shortcut. Okay, oh, this is just type A too. Control scheme for players new to the series and for those experienced with standard third person shooters. Let's look at type B, what's different on this? Arsenal menus on R3, sprint is on L1, sneak is on R1? Mmm. I think I'm going to stick with Type A. Type B actually sounds similar to controls in The Evil Within 1, if I remember correctly. But I may not. That was a long time ago, guys. I'm just going to stick with A. And I will stick the brightness. We want that mark barely visible. These things are always bullshit, though. Like, for me, if I bring it all the way down here, I can still see that mark. It's still barely visible. But I don't like that at all. I'm putting it up where it was. <laughs> The last chance pack has been unlocked. Bonus items will be added to your inventory during Chapter 2 after starting a new game. This is because I pre-ordered, guys, and I got a pre-order bonus from Amazon, so... Yeah, we get some extra stuff. It's pretty nice. Looks like a gun, some kind of bottle, a hundred... I don't know what those are... A box, a first aid kit, and some herbs? Are there herbs in this game? <laughs> yeah, if you guys didn't know... Uh, the Evil Within games are made by Shinji Mikami, who is the mastermind behind Resident Evil 4, which is my all-time favorite horror game. I'm curious what your guys' favorite horror game is. A lot of you are probably here because you agree with me about Resident Evil 4, but let me know what horror game you like the most. That's kind of what made The Evil Within 1 somewhat disappointing, because, man, like, Shinji Mikami has made some freaking incredible games, and that game just didn't hold up in a number of ways. Uh, sprint, toggle, cover, hold. I don't think I really need to change any of this stuff. What we should do, though, is turn some subtitles on. If I can find them in these menus under, under general. We've got text language and voice language. It doesn't really say anything about subtitles, though. And I don't see them in any of these other menus. That is interesting. Alright, maybe we'll get that ability later. Or maybe they're just on by default, I don't know. New game! And here we have Casual, Survival, and Nightmare. Let's start at the top and work our way down. Nightmare is for those who enjoy a challenge and for experienced survival horror players. Resources are limited and enemies hit much harder. Careful item management and strategic play are an absolute must to survive. Recommended for players who enjoyed the difficulty of the previous game. Really? Okay, survival is for those who want the basics of a survival horror experience. Keep it on your resources, approach situations with caution, don't get overconfident. And casual is for those who want to experience a story without a struggle. Items are abundant, you can take many more hits before you die. I'm going to split the difference and go with survival, guys. And then aim assist. Please choose whether you'd like... Whether or not you'd like to use aim assist. Aim assist will automatically lock your target and ready to kill into enemies. Ah, I think I'm good without it. 
Maybe we'll change that later if I end up being super terrible. <laughs> Home engulfed in flames. Tragic fire kills child and nanny. I'm pretty sure that's talking about our daughter. Is that Sebastian? That is a different voice actor, guys. <laughs> Alright, chapter one, Into the Flame. We are replaying a memory right now, I believe. I know our house is on fire and our daughter's in there, but we should probably look around for items first. You never know when items will come in handy, guys. Looks like there's actually not really much to get out here. <laughs> vault the bush! Vault the bush, Sebastian! We can't vault the bush. Fine, I will go around like a pleb. Oh god, Lily! Lily! No! Alright, we're not going in that way. Here's another door, though. Still alive! Oh shit! Sebastian, you gotta move quicker, dude. I can't sprint right now. I can crouch, but I can't sprint. How did this happen? Here we go. Why can I not move faster? My daughter is literally burning alive. I'm coming, Lily. Hold on. I'm just meandering at a plodding pace because I don't care about you. That's the message I'm getting from Seb right now. I'm here, Lily. I'm here. Uh, not in there. Here we go. Aha! Lily's room. I'm here. Dad's here. You weren't here for me, Dad. Fuck. Kidman? Kidman? It's Nicole Kidman, guys. Hello, Sebastian. It's been a long time. Oh, she's got a new voice actress, too. Three years. I've been trying to track you down for three years. And you thought you'd find me at the bottom of an empty bottle. Is that it? And why are you here now, damn it? You didn't find me because they didn't want you to. Calm down, Sebastian. You knew what was going to happen in that hospital, didn't you? What happened at Beacon is in the past. You need to forget it. You sound just like that psychologist that force shoved down my throat. But he didn't have answers. You do. You're gonna tell me... about Mobius. <laughs> I'm here because of this. Where? 
Where did you get this? Lily's still alive. <gasps> Say what? Lily is dead. I read the police report. I was at her funeral. We can rewrite history if we want to. Staging a death is child's play. Why would I come out of the shadows just to lie to you? Lily is alive, and she's with us. But she's in danger. We need you to help save her. Save her? What have you done to her? Get your hands off me! I was hoping you'd come willingly, Sebastian. But we don't have time for this bullshit. We need you. Lily needs you. And just like that, I guess we're going back inside the machine. Sebastian? You're awake. Good. Yeah. Great. Where are we? You're in one of our facilities. So this is the almighty Mobius, huh? Be careful about what you say. You don't know how powerful they are. Right. So powerful they have to kidnap a washed up ex-cop to help them. <laughs> At least your terrible sense of humor is still intact. Enough of this bullshit. Where's Lily? Patience. All your answers are right here. The Beacon Mental Hospital incident was... an unfortunate setback. But we used the knowledge gained to build a new... and vastly improved STEM system. Mm. What does this have to do with my daughter? Imagine it. Millions of minds connected together. Happiness for one is happiness for all. This machine, this miracle, will allow our species to achieve greatness. We needed to start with a mind that was pure and clean enough to support thousands of personalities. The mind of an innocent child. You connected Lily to that machine? <clears throat> Your daughter is quite special. The most stable core candidate we've ever tested. Thanks to her, the new STEM has been a smashing success. Until recently. A little over a week ago, Lily vanished. Just stopped sending signals. Then the STEM environment began to collapse. We thought it was just a technical glitch. An easy fix, so we sent a team of Mobius agents inside. But then we lost contact with them. And STEM went dark. Think about this, Mr. Castellanos. I am providing you an opportunity. Not only to see your daughter again, but to save her life. Something you thought you failed to do before. You can save her, or let her die. It's your choice. Good luck, Sebastian. And please, try to cooperate with any team members you might find in there. I know you don't trust us, but they have the same goals as you do. Nope. That's all right. Not true. I'm fine by myself. Just remember to call me the moment you find Lily, so that we can begin the extraction process. I'll be out here for you.
and someone else will be in there for you. That wasn't cryptic at all. Are you ready? I know she meant Lily, but you could take that any number of ways. Be careful in there, Sebastian. We're counting on you. Stem entry in three, two, one. The Evil Within 2. Inside the machine, obviously. Okay. I guess we should get moving, guys. Right off the bat, I can tell you this game looks... Huh? Right off the bat, guys, I can tell you this game looks a lot better than the first game. Dad, help me! I'm coming, Lily! Dad! Is this gonna be our entire experience in here? I know it's hard to accept, Myra. Gone. Our little girl is gone. No. no. I'll never accept it. If you won't help me, I'll find out the truth on my own. What the hell is this place? Detective, we've got a call. They're giving us a recap of like the entire story up till now. What could this thing be? Oh, it's a radio. What the? You should probably answer it. Hello? Sebastian, are you there? Kidman? What? Snap out of it, Sebastian. You've made it in safely. How are you feeling? Terrible. Like the worst hangover ever. Don't worry. It will pass once your mind has adjusted. You're in an area separate from the main system right now. That's how we're able to maintain communication with you. This construct is called your room. It's a safe zone that was formed from your own memories. My memories, huh? If that's the case, then where are my wife and child? This place looks like my old office at Crimson City PD. It was your self-conscious that built it. You should ask yourself that question. Let's get down to business. We sent some information into your room. Do you see anything unfamiliar? Um, let's take a look around. This looks familiar, but let's investigate anyway. Lily drew this picture of me. It was burned up along with everything else in the house. What is that thing in my hand? It looks like a dick. Why did my daughter draw me with a dick in my hand? What a weirdo. And then we got some missing people over here. I guess these are the operatives we're supposed to find that she mentioned. Okay, we've got Yukiko Hoffman, Julian Sykes, Liam O'Neill, 
Miles Harrison and William Baker. William Baker, isn't that the name of a dude from Resident Evil? I don't know, that's, the name sounds familiar, but it's a very generic name, so it could be anybody, I guess. <laughs> there are photos of a bunch of Mobius agents here. Your lost team, I assume. That's them. Let us know if you locate any of them. You're our only line of communication into STEM. They're stuck in Union and searching for Lily, too. Union? This STEM environment was designed to look and feel like a small town called Union. Great. So your experts need rescuing, too, huh? If anyone can do it, it's you. Thanks for the vote of confidence, but I'm only here to find Lily. There's more info there. You should check it out before you go. All right. Chapter two, something not quite right. So we've got five of those dudes to find, and then up here we've got search for the Mobius search team members within STEM for a lead on finding Lily. Okay. And this is just like my degrees and whatnot, I guess. My first commendation. It feels like another lifetime. I guess because it was. So I've got a lot of thoughts swirling around in my head right now, guys. Uh, first of all, I miss the old voices. I think the voices were one of the things I actually liked the most from the first game. Not necessarily the acting itself, but I liked Sebastian's voice actor. Like, the way he spoke and his, like, the sound of his voice. Nicole Kidman was voiced by Jennifer Carpenter or Deborah Morgan from Dexter, who I really like. So I kind of miss them. These new people aren't terrible, but I'm going to have to, you know, get used to that. And I also like how, like, so far we actually have a very clearly defined objective and, you know, things, like, to look for in this game. Because the first game was super vague about everything. You never knew what the fuck was going on. And, uh, it's not quite like that in this one. So, oh, we can look at all these independently? Oh, snap. Okay, well, let's go. Come on now. Union, huh? Looks like any town USA. It was designed that way to keep the test subjects calm and relaxed. Calm and relaxed. The exact opposite of Beacon. What happened at Beacon was beyond our control. It doesn't seem like you've got much control this time either. Look, I don't know what you're going to encounter in there. If you need information, I'd suggest you try talking to some of the locals. You know, canvas the area. Just like you taught me back at KCPD. You were never a real detective, Kidman. And you're not a detective anymore. But let's try to do some detecting anyway, okay? <laughs> yeah, so follow me on this, guys. I was thinking about this during that intro cutscene. The first game happened essentially because... Alright, sorry, let's back up for a second, guys. I'll try to get through this real quickly. <laughs> I just want to think this through. So, the guy named Ruvik created the first STEM machine, right? And what happened was Mobius showed up and basically overpowered him and took the machine from him and like finished the designs themselves and then they made his mind the primary core mind of the machine with everyone else linked to it so that was the reason that the entire first game was so fucked up was because Ruvik had a really fucked up brain from his past and he was influencing everything that was happening now if a little innocent child named Lily is the core mind of the current STEM environment or whatever this shouldn't really be a fucked up place should it this should be a happy place, full of rainbows and marshmallows and happiness, unless they did something awful to my daughter to make her mind fucked up in the first place. So I'm not sure how this is going to shake out. I mean, this is obviously still going to be a horror game, right? But it doesn't make a ton of sense to me just yet. Anyways, let's keep looking at this stuff. Hoffman. Psychology and surveillance. This one could be cagey. What does that even mean? Cagey? All right. Sykes. A tech, but at least he has some small arms training. Sure. O'Neill. They must not have been expecting trouble if they sent in all these technicians. Yeah, right, because it shouldn't be a super messed up place. That's what I was thinking. Harrison. Combat specialist, huh? Hopefully he can take care of himself. Okay, last one. Mr. Baker. No, I want Mr. Baker. <laughs> this is the kind of deal where the the contextual area is very small. Baker. Team leader. He's the guy I should try to find first. Okay, and then the picture. 
God damn it. I just want to look at the picture. Uh, oh, oh, I had it. Why did they make these areas so small, guys? Back up. Walk up to it. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh. This should not be this difficult. It really, really shouldn't. Oh, and I keep getting it. Okay, got it. Lily, your team, and now me. We're all stuck inside STEM. I still don't understand why you can't just take them all out of their pods and wake them up. It doesn't work that way. Without a core, we're totally locked out of the system. To forcibly remove anyone from STEM at this point would kill them and leave their consciousness trapped inside there. Great. Mobius has got some stellar backup plans. Stating the obvious isn't going to speed things along. You need to find Lily. Otherwise she, you, and everyone else inside is going to die. Yeah, sounds like a pretty shitty machine, honestly. You really should have had some contingency plans in place. And then over here... I thought I saw another button pop up over here. I know I'm going slow, guys. I just want to make sure I hit everything in here. You know how I do. I like to take my time. Okay. Is that a cat? What up, cat? Are you a friendly cat? A cat? I don't ever remember owning a cat. Look at the kooky-ass red eyes. Slide projector. Where did my memory dig this up? Elementary school? Photographic slide, a relic from a pre-phone camera era. These are found mostly in old people's attics and estate sales. They can be viewed using the slide projector in Sebastian's room. Oh. Photographic slides. I guess that's a new kind of collectible. And the projector is right here. I don't trust that cat. There's something weird about it, guys. Okay. Oh, look at that. A happy memory. Talk to Kidman. We can talk to Kidman about the pictures. Kidman, you there? Always. You wouldn't have told me about Lily if your damn machine didn't go on the fritz. I would have spent the rest of my life mourning her and you wouldn't have cared. I cared, but I couldn't say anything. They would have killed me. I'm not sure I believe you. Why would I lie about that? To manipulate me. To get me to perform like a good little soldier. You've lied to me before. Our whole friendship was built on a lie. Okay, I get it. And I don't blame you for feeling that way. You'll never know how I feel until you've lost your family. I never had a family to lose. Just two people who brought me into this world and treated me like a burden instead of a daughter. Better to have loved and lost? Is that what you're saying? Maybe. At least you had people who cared about you. Point taken. Hmm. I don't know, Kidman. There's still a pretty fucked up thing to do. Oh, upgrade goo! Upgrade goo is back, guys! Yes! Green gel. It's gross and it usually comes from dead enemies, but if you collect it, you can use it to obtain increased abilities. Thanks, Kitty. <laughs> Alright, Kitty. Maybe I misjudged you. Maybe you're not so bad after all. But I am allergic to you, so stay away from me. No, I don't want to hear it. You have to stay away from me or else I'll start sneezing everywhere. My eyes will get all red, my nose will get all runny. It's just a bad scene all around, okay? So I wonder if this is the same place from the first game. We had like a safe area in the police station from the first game. Ah! A mirror. Just like Beacon. Should be a way out. Okay, well... Why couldn't my memory just make regular doors? Because you're remembering your time from the first game when you were in the stem, and it's going to mirror that. <laughs> I didn't even try that. <laughs> it's gonna mirror it, guys. Uh, yeah, that does make me happy, though. My, so, like, my big wish list for this game was for the story to be a little bit better, for the green gel, the upgrade goo, to make a comeback. I call it the upgrade goo, guys, because I, I love that concept. And I just want it to play a little better. You know, I want the gunplay to feel a little better. I want the overall systems to feel a little better. So, so far, we've gotten, I'd say, two out of three of those. So this is pretty cool. Got a lot of stuff up here we can't look at. And I guess we're about done in here, except for this thing. 
Save terminals. Save terminals can be used to save your progress at any time. They can be found in safe houses and in Sebastian's room. Alright, so this is what a save terminal looks like. It's got a whole communist theme going on with the red stars, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead and hit this up. Chapter 2, something not quite right. Alrighty. Anything else I can do in here? I think we're good, guys. Cat, I really need you to shut up. If you're in here making noise the entire time, I'm going to come back with a gun and I'm going to shoot you. Nothing personal. Well, that's a lie. It is personal. Shut your face. Here we go again. Into the looking glass. Ooh, we are instancing out, guys. Sebastian enters STEM. Kidman tells him that finding the members of the Lost Search team may be useful. Sebastian sets out to Union in hopes of finding any trace of Lily. So I guess we're actually entering Union proper now. This is where the game will open up, hopefully. Oh, no. <laughs> Lily, what's wrong? My doll's head is broke. It's okay. Mom can fix it for you. She can fix anything. Hey. Sebastian? What's wrong? I've got a wonderful family, an amazingly smart and beautiful wife. Why wouldn't I be all right? Come here, Myra. You've been working too hard. It's making you delirious. Are you sure you're not coming down with something? Is this the right place? I don't think so, dude. I'm not sure what that cutscene was all about, but it kind of made me really curious. Where is Myra? If I remember from the first game, she was the one who started the investigation thinking Lily might still be alive, but I don't remember if they ever told us what, you know, happened with all that. Like, where did she end up? Hmm. The way forward reveals itself. Okay. Hey, I got my sprint meter! Wow, that UI looks like exactly the same as it did in the first game. <laughs> oh, guys, remember the keys from the statues? I wonder if those are back as well. I gotta keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. Uh, William Baker. Hey, it's the first dude. It's this kind of thing where I have to go through the door, because otherwise, whatever it is, won't load. Yep. <laughs> we are in a hotel. Got a flashlight we can toggle. Nice. If I remember right, in the first game, you had a lantern and it just kind of came and went as it pleased. I don't think you could control it. I could be wrong. But I am going to stay in stealth mode in this place, because I think... This is like the first dangerous area of the game. Anything could jump out at any minute, guys. I guess I should be trying all these doors, though, actually. I figure I'd get a prompt if I actually could open it, but we should try anyway. Okay. It's about to get spooky up in here, guys. This game came out on a Friday the 13th, which is pretty awesome that it worked out that way. <laughs> Here we go. What 
the hell? What? That's one of the search team. Baker. <laughs> not anymore, it's not. Okay. Well, looks like we can investigate this. This is like a... This is like a crime scene reenactment from the Arkham games. You guys remember that stuff? When you could, like, play back the scene of what happened? That's what that reminds me of. Let's look over here. Okay, that prompt fooled me. I saw the investigate prompt, and I thought it was for something on the table over here. Creepy-ass record player playing classical music. Oh, shit! <laughs> Who's laughing? Who laughed at me? Okay, let's hit this up. Is the whole point of this to just watch this play out in slow motion? Like, what am I doing here? investigation points are there I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with this <laughs> I don't know why we can come in here and view it through the camera I don't appear to be able to do anything in there guys all right well I guess we'll just leave that be Some spooky ass noises happening around this place, and I don't like it. Somebody laughed at me earlier. Huh? Ah, a hidden passage. Someone tried to block the way out. Or in? That may be the way forward. Let me look over here first. Is this like an old-timey film development lab? Hey, we got a file! Sadistic. Whoever did this must have enjoyed it. So we got a photo of William Baker. Baker, the search team leader. He was frozen in time when I found him. This must have been taken by the camera right by him. But how is this even possible? Turn it over. Nothing on the back. Okay. I guess there are a number of collectibles. And it turned my light off automatically when I went into that. Okay. That's probably going to annoy me as the game goes on. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing something with this. It's like we can enter the time warp, but we can't do anything about it. All right. Well, let's head through the bookcase, I suppose. All right, scary monsters. I don't have any weapons yet, so you better not pull any shit on me. No, you're waiting to. Oh man, this area is big. Which way to go, guys? Which way to go? Wait, was this door here a second ago? I'm honestly not sure if it was. <laughs> I feel like it wasn't, but I could be wrong. That was maybe the best thing about the first game was 
the way the environments would just like shift and change in real time. What's who that? Hello? <laughs> Shit. Who was that? <laughs> okay. Laughing at me over the loudspeaker wasn't enough. He had to call me up just to laugh directly in my ear. What a dick. That way's still blocked off, so... Okay, we're being funneled back here. Manuela Ruberto. Can't go that way. Oh, I didn't even realize I could try to open it. Okay. Probably won't work, but we have to try. We have to know. Yeah, I'm surprised that this UI hasn't changed, like, at all, as far as I can tell. It's exactly the way I remember it. Oh, the sprint meter takes a while to come back. Wow, that takes forever. God, I hope I can upgrade that. <laughs> I don't remember it taking that long before. Okay, I guess we're going upstairs, guys. And honestly, God, with as long as that takes to come back, I guess I shouldn't be sprinting around everywhere. Because if something jumps out at me, I'm going to need my sprint meter to get away. And I need it to be ready. I guess we can just ration it out, though. Just try and be smart about it, right? Okay, do we want to go in there? Do we want to keep going up? Let's come back here first. We got here a second file. Extravagant letter to applicant SV. Who is SV? Congratulations, Truth Seeker. Thank you for taking our spiritual acuity test. We're pleased to welcome you to the next level of knowledge. Please report to the nearest Mu Center with this letter to ascend from probationary applicant to the position of Mu Disciple. This letter guarantees you an exalted position at the next cleansing ceremony. Handwritten on the back of the envelope, lies all lies. Huh. Thanks for the heads up on that. <laughs> Can I smash this? I don't have my melee attack yet, guys. I want to smash the vase, but I can't do it. Alright, I guess we should go through the door first before we proceed upstairs. Can't really see what's up there. Alright. Whoa! Help! Help me! Hey! Damn it! What's going on here? Something just made a meal out of that woman. That's what happened right there, Sebastian. I'm just gonna keep going this way, actually. Yeah, I mean, it should look better because it's three years later, but I remember the first game was really good about, like, the dynamic lighting, but some of the... Environmental design was really bad. This game seems better overall so far. Both like the dynamic lighting and the environments have a lot of detail. It still doesn't look great, I would say, but it looks better. What is going on here? <laughs> okay, there it faked me out. It turned my light off for a second, and then it came back right as I tried to turn it back on. That was weird. Just up with these curtains all over the place. And what is that? That looks like an item I could pick up, but I really can't. It's just a weird object in the environment, I guess. Oh! Uh oh. Shit. Entering and exiting cover. R1 hold enter cover when the cover icon is displayed. The cover icon will be displayed when you are facing a valid cover point. Okay. 
Oh, there's multiple pages. Moving in cover. Move alongside cover around corners. When near a corner and cover, an arrow icon will be displayed. Move in the direction indicated using L to around the corner without breaking cover. Okay. Let's try this out. I would love to get a stealth kill on this guy. Oh, Jesus. Wait, actually, I'm not even sure if I'm armed. I should probably just try and get around him and live. I don't know. <laughs> Who the hell was that? Yeah, that's fine. It's interesting to note that you don't actually, like, snap to the cover, guys. You have to hold down R1 the whole time. And then you can move along and whatnot. But the second you let go of R1, you come out of cover. Interesting. That's a little different. Okay, what is up with these? Ah! <laughs> that freaks me out every time that happens. It's so abrupt. Just like the search team number. Is this guy like literally freezing people in time in the moment of their death? Just so he can, like, make them relive it over and over and over and over and over again. Like, for all eternity. Because, wow. That's fucked up. Like, that is evil. Incarnate. I gotta find a way out of here. Good call, Sebastian. I was thinking of getting a room here and taking a vacation. Seems like a great place to just shack up for a while. God, stop turning my damn light off. Okay. Yeah, let's just go back here. Five seconds after what we just saw. Oh shit. Okay, vault over obstacles. File three out of 40. Photo of another victim. A photograph of another murder victim. This is a Mobius uniform, well lit and in focus. It looks like a gun was used to shoot him in the head. So I guess all these dudes are going to be dead, right? <laughs> That's what I'm learning. Alright, we're not going that way. I'm quickly learning that unless I actually get a prompt to open the door, I can't go through it. And then if I try, that's when it'll give me the locked thing, but it won't tell me that up front. And uh, I just kind of instinctively mashed the X button there, but it seems we have... Yeah, we have the same door opening system that's been in place in Mikami games since Resident Evil 4, <laughs> where you can either hit it once to open it slowly, or you can double tap it and kick that motherfucker in. I like that, I like that a lot. Can't use that phone. Okay. This feels like we're still in an intro sequence right now. Whoa, what the fuck is that? What? Oh, I didn't realize the floor wasn't there. <laughs> really glad for that invisible wall, because I would have fallen right into that place. Okay, wait. Do we see everything back here? No. Yeah, I don't think we can do anything else in there. Alright, let's keep moving up. Oh, good. Severed heads. Wrapped up in cloths. That's great. And bodies hanging from the ceiling. Really don't like what the hell's going on in this place anymore. Wasn't too bad when I first got here, but it's just slowly ramping up. 
Oh. Okay, so this path is blocked. Yeah, we're not going that way. Okay. Shit! We have no choice but to follow, guys. Even though it's a terrible idea. That picture just changed. Okay, that looks like a brain. That looks like the core brain. Could it be Lily's brain? Is that what they're not telling me? Rebirth. Okay. Yeah, if you guys think about it, in the first game, Ruvik's brain was the core, right? But Ruvik was actually kind of dead. It was really just his brain. He didn't have his body anymore. So what if that's what they did to Lily? What if they're not telling me that Lily doesn't exist anymore? It's just her brain. And even if we save her, she's not going to have a body to live in. Unless she pulls a Ruvik and enters somebody else's body. I bet you that's the end of the game is she jumps into Nicole Kidman's body and Nicole Kidman becomes my daughter. <laughs> Calling it right now, guys. All right, let's take a ride up. Elevators always work out great in horror games. Nothing will go wrong here. It's a long ass ride. Don't like the look of that. Not even a little bit. I think we are about to get attacked, guys. And hung from the ceiling. Oh. Okay, if these things just, like, come to life and start attacking me... I'm not gonna be able to handle it. What the fuck? These things make a lot of noise when you run into them. <laughs> Wait, are there more? I think there are more than there were. Yeah, this game is definitely playing mind games with me, guys. It's very effective. Reality just subtly changing. Okay, all right. Oh. Oh, shit. Yes, shit is right. Now, where did he bring me? And why did he take my picture? I did not consent to having my picture taken. Although I guess I'm in public, so I can't really complain. Is STEM a public or private place? I don't think there's any uh, case law about that. <laughs> what the hell? <sighs> Motherfuck! What the hell is that? Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'd say it's time to run. Okay. Ring around the rosy, and then run back this way. Oh. 
Oh god, I'm scared to turn around, guys. I don't know how close she is. I think she's really fucking close. I'm about to run out of sprints. Keep going, Sebastian. That sucks. Ladder. Am I safe? God damn it. What the hell is that thing? Uh, I think I'm safe up here, guys. Okay, did that remind anybody else of Laura from the first game? Like a new version of Laura? <laughs> Laura was Ruvik's sister, and she manifested as like a spider monster in the first game. And I feel like. Ah! Dude! Oh. Okay, so she hears things and saw blades the tunnels when she hears things, so... I guess I'll just keep moving as quietly as possible. I don't want to go down here. I have to, though. Oh, fuck. Yeah, but the music hasn't quieted down, so this isn't over yet. Yup. I don't think they're kidding! I'm getting sandwiched, guys! Oh, shit! Oh, thanks for the knife, fucker! Yeah! Alright. What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, you don't know. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> Oh, good lord, guys. Automatic health regen. When your health is critically low, the life gauge will turn red. While the life gauge is red, it will automatically regenerate up to a certain point. It will regenerate more quickly if you stand still, so try to find a safe place to hide and recover when in critical condition. Yep, also exactly like the first game. And we obtained the survival knife. Awesome. So our health goes up to a certain point, and we're stable again. Yeah, guys, I don't know. That lady monster right there... Sounded exactly like Lara, at least what I remember Lara sounding like. I don't know, I don't know what she would be doing in here. Or maybe she's just inspired by Lara, like on a practical level from the developers. I have no idea. In any case, guys, oh man, this is uh, shaping up okay. We haven't really gotten into the meat of the game yet, I don't think. This seems like a long intro. And uh, when we come back, we will continue moving forward and see what kind of stuff happens. I want to say thank you guys for watching. Please like, please subscribe, share the video, tell your friends, get it tattooed on your tits, all that good stuff. And uh, I will see you guys in the next part. Take care.